<coughs> Steals Karate, your complete martial arts training center. Steals Karate in Salem, the best place to train. Okay, uh, I'd like to thank the media for coming. Uh, my name is Gabriel Ben Moose. I'm the lead PIO for the uh, during the advisory. I'm the deputy chief for the city of Salem Fire Department. Uh, here with us are uh, Mr. Steve McCoy. He's our mayor pro temp. Uh, Council Chris Hoyt from Ward Six. We have uh, Steve Power, city manager. Dr. R Richard Lehman from uh, Oregon Health Authority. Uh, Mr. Peter Fernandez. Uh, he's our public works director. Uh, we have uh, Chris Grogan from OEM from Oregon uh, Emergency Management. Uh, we have uh, Greg Walsh, he's our city emergency manager, and of course uh, Ed Flick, uh, county emergency manager. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, our city manager. Thank you, Gabe, and thank you for continuing your, your coverage, continuing your assistance to the city and getting information out consistently and accurately. This is a, a challenging time for the city, and we really appreciate the, the cooperation from, from the media. Uh, this morning we received test results that require us to continue the health advisory through the weekend. The health advisory is for our drinking water for members of the community who are vulnerable and who are under the age of six. The vulnerable population includes, as, as we've shared previously, uh, pregnant women, people with compromised immune systems, kidney, liver conditions, pets, and, 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 other, and, and the elderly. We will be working over the weekend. We will be receiving test results over the weekend. However, we need two days of clear samples. So the advisory will be continuing at least through Monday. Please continue your own preparedness we are continuing our water distribution sites in cooperation with Marion County. There are nine distribution sites throughout the greater Salem area. Four are within the city of Salem. We're at one here, the Croc Center. We will continue to provide those distribution sites. However, people need to prepare to have water available. I want to emphasize, really want to emphasize, that the water is safe to drink for most of the Salem population. The Oregon Health Authority will be speaking to the health risks later. For the majority of our population, the water is safe to drink. So please help us share that message with your listeners, your viewers, and your readers. I want to thank the tremendous cooperation the city has received from Marion County, from the state of Oregon, the Oregon Military Department, the Oregon Health Authority, the donations we've received from corporations, and neighbors helping each other, neighbors helping those who aren't able to get to our water distribution sites, looking out for neighbors that, that need help. We are committed to continuing to provide information to the to the public. I don't think we'll be having a press briefing tomorrow. We will be providing information out through our, our website and social media. We continue to offer to, to the media, if you would like to come to our, our Joint Information Center, uh, we, we are extending that invitation to you. We want to continue with your help to provide the best possible information to to the public. We will be posting test results today and as we receive those test results over the weekend. Thank you. Okay. I'd like to invite Dr. Lehman uh, to speak. Oh, actually, excuse me, I'll let the uh, mayor would like to say something. Like to say something. Sure. sure. Hi, Steve McCoy. I'm uh, the city council president and acting mayor while well, the mayor is in Great Britain on vacation. Uh, I just want to thank um, the many people in, in Salem who have expressed the support to the council and the staff uh, for uh, all we're doing to uh, deal with this problem, unprecedented problem, moving forward. I also would like to urge some patience here. There's nobody that wants this uh, corrected more than the city council and uh, the staffs involved, but this is a, a process that's just taking a while to deal with and, and move forward. 
progress is being made. Um, certainly we've heard the issues we, we heard um, uh, when this first came about and the prompt and accurate reporting of the results, the pack, uh, keeping the citizens appraised of what's going on at all times is, uh, was first and foremost and as you can see with these daily press conferences and uh, the reaction times to the news as we get the information out to you and post it on our citywide website. We've, we've heard you and we're doing those things. But moving forward, just uh, while we, we deal with these issues, uh, give us the patience and the support that we've received here. And moving forward, we'd appreciate it. And we thank you for, uh, uh, for that patience and concern dealing with this problem. Thank you. Dr. Lehman, would you like to say something about just kind of what we talked about as the medical side went? Sure. The vulnerable population. Yes, hello. Yes, I'm Richard Lehman with. Uh, Oregon Public Health Authority, Public Health Division, and we uh, continue to work with the county and with the city uh, and support their efforts. I just wanted to say, to put this in perspective, uh, when the EPA sets an advisory level, it sets it with a large safety buffer. And the way they did this is they looked at the best studies available to look at what these particular chemicals, these particular uh, toxins, uh, how they affect uh, health, and they looked at the lowest level at which they saw in these studies adverse health events, and then they went way below that. So this is the level at which we might expect illness. and down here is the level at which the advisory is. The advisory allows us to recognize when these chemicals are in the water, but it gives us time in order to do what the, the city of Salem is currently doing, in order to find the ways to keep those levels low before they reach a level where they are likely to cause illness. A word or two on vulnerable populations. Who are they? What are they? Sure. So the vulnerable vulnerable populations are sensitive groups, as uh, uh, as the city manager mentioned, include kids who are uh, age five or less, and that's because uh, the amount of water that they drink or their body weight is more than most of the rest of us uh, adults. Uh, it also includes people who have underlying uh, liver disease, people who are on dialysis who have uh, end-stage problems with their kidneys, and we also think it's reasonable just because folks who are elderly, and typically we'd say age 65 or over, just because they may not have quite the reserve to respond to uh, an injury or insult, we also think it's reasonable for them to follow this advisory guidance. Pregnant women? Pregnant women would also be included just because an unborn uh, child might be potentially affected. But again, I would emphasize that the, the actual likelihood of illness at these levels, even for those groups, is small. We are doing this in order to be as cautious as possible in order to protect those folks uh, while we're solving the problem. You're not a veterinarian, but also for pets, correct? Thank you for adding that. Yes, and that's in part because pets are also smaller uh, for the most part than we are, unless you have a Newfoundland. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to invite uh, Lillian Gofus from the Salem Kaiser School District. Thank you, Lillian Govis, Salem Kaiser Public Schools. I want to first of all thank the Croc Center for allowing us to move the water distribution site here. We have multiple graduations going on at the fairgrounds today. I would advise people to avoid the area if possible due to traffic. Um, so they were able to make the concession to allow us to distribute water here, which is um, a huge benefit to the entire community in terms of the ease to collect that water. Secondly, from an operational standpoint, the school district will be providing bottled water to pre-K through first grade, all vulnerable populations, any pregnant and nursing mothers like in our teen parent program through the remainder of the school year. Our school year ends next week, 
Um, and so we will, from an operational standpoint, just continue that process uh, that we've established and continue that level of service, despite knowing that the water is safe to drink for the majority of the population. Um, we're currently assessing our summer programs and identifying any needs there so that we can be prepared uh, from a district standpoint to support programs like Jump Start Kindergarten um, and ensure that our community is safe and supported. Okay. Uh, I'd like to invite uh, Greg Walsh, our emergency manager, just to remind me. Thank you, everybody, uh, and thank you for getting the message out as well. You help us communicate to the people that are in need. Now, one thing that we would like people to remember is that when you come to these bulk distribution sites that you really do need to bring your own container to receive water in. Um, it, is, it is something we were originally providing water um, in jugs and containers, but uh, we now have the full bulk distribution sites set up and established, and therefore we really need people to bring their own containers to receive this water in. Thank you. Okay. Like uh, Marion County Emergency Manager, I'll just say that we continue to work with the, the city and our nonprofit health and social service partners to deliver packaged water to uh, the folks that can't otherwise get to the, uh, uh, the distribution sites. So I'm happy to say that through the support of the Marion Folk Food Chair and the Oregon Food Bank, we were able to deliver over 7,000 gallons of packaged water products to, to vulnerable populations that uh, fall within the advisory group. Thank you. I'd like to invite Chris uh, Grogan with the OEM. I am with the Public Information with the Oregon Office of Emergency Management. I'd just like to make a brief uh, statement on behalf of the state. So we're working multi-agency coordination with Marion County and Salem in a unified emergency operations center. Um, we have representatives from Department of uh, Human Services, Oregon Health Authority, uh, Oregon Military Department, the Oregon Office of Emergency Management. Uh, while this is an advisory, um, for vulnerable populations, we're taking it seriously. We want to make sure that people who are getting um, water or who need water are getting it. Um, we have nine points of distribution set up, as was mentioned earlier. Four of those are staffed by the Oregon Military Department. Uh, we want to remind the public to bring their own containers to those sites. Uh, we're going to continue to uh, monitor and coordinate with our local and state partners um, and determine. Uh, the house, how the state could provide additional resources if, if that's necessary. Um, so we just want to make sure that everybody who needs access to safe drinking water, potable water, has it. Um, and lastly, uh, I'd like to thank our media partners for helping us share this important information. Um, so thank you for that. Thank you. Okay, so this ends this press conference. Thank you very much. Um, well, I was wondering if somebody could speak to why is this getting into our system? Where's the failure at? Um, you know, this is this algae bloom thing is an ongoing issue year after year. How is it getting past our filtration system? Sure. I'm Peter Fernandez, Public Works Director for the City of Salem. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, there is no failure in the system. Uh, our filtration system relies on clean water, uh, clean source water. Uh, it's uh, been a reliable system since the, the mid-1930s. Algae is a relatively new, and algae toxins a relatively new constituent that's shown up uh, in our source water in the reservoir. Uh, we've been testing for toxins since 2011. This is the very first time that we have actually detected toxins inside of our finished water so that uh, the toxins have gotten past our filtration system. We don't know why that is. Uh, we are looking for options to see if we can address that, that issue. Uh, the options at this point appear to be uh, very complex and very expensive, so it's something that we'll need to see how quickly we can, we can move along. The, uh, uh, what we have done is uh, purchased equipment that will be up and running in the next week or two so that we can start to do our own testing instead of uh, uh, having to send uh, all of our samples out to uh, out-of-state labs so that we can have information quicker. Uh, but uh, we just don't know at this point uh, why the toxins got through. Okay, so at this point there's, there's not really a plan in place to address it. You guys are just more in the study process to try to figure out that plan? Right, at this point, uh, we do know that there is one method that uh, removes toxins. It's called uh, granulated uh, uh, activated carbon. Uh, basically, you put 
carbon in the filters. Our filters are two and a half acres uh, in size, and uh, there's four of them. So the question would be is, you know, how would how would we be able to to, to implement that if that is the proper solution? So we just, we just don't know yet. But we're we're working on those solutions just as quickly as we can. Thank I you. have a question. I don't know if it's for Peter or sure. uh, Steve Powers, but given the change in the test results, can you? I don't need the specifics, but can you just sort of summarize what's happening? Are they going up and down, or what is it that's, that's happening with the test results? Yes, in fact, they are going up and down. Uh, so at the five uh, locations that we are testing for finished water, uh, what we found is the location that precipitated our, our most recent advisory uh, now shows uh, no detection, but the location where our finished water enters the system showed a detection that was above uh, the health advisory limits. Uh, we really want to see no detects or, or, or detections below health advisory at all five of our finished water locations. So, so it's just bouncing around all over the place at this point. And I have two other questions. Uh, the first one is I understand there were some uh, in incidents at water sites that they discussed with members of the public being upset and freaking to be called or things like that. Could somebody address kind of what the reaction of the public is going to be? We're, we're, we're really asking for the public's cooperation and understanding. Our, our, our volunteers, our employees are, are doing the best they can to distribute water. Uh, we, we initially were providing bottled water. We have shifted, as was said earlier, to bulk water. And we're really asking for people's cooperation and understanding. Uh, please, at least one site, we're, we're there to help distribute water. They were handing out water. So we're, we're, we're also, uh, as, as you can see from, th from this site, we're also making sure that to the extent we can, that the sites are safe and accessible, and, and at times uh, the police have, have helped us with that as well. Uh, Just one more, one more. On, the, on the test the results that you're talking about now, when was the first sample from the latest results? When were they sampled from? These are results from June 6th. Samples received June 6th. So, Wednesday? So, uh, Wednesday. 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 Yes. Wednesday and the samples came back this morning still first, first thing up. in the morning first right so morning. some okay. of the sites were lower An, uh, another site came out uh, above the health advisor so the head of the system coming in that the, the one yeah. the one that we saw the the, the, the increase in. so um, we're taking tests every day yes and um, the, the new testing system that you spoke about how will that change you know what's going on here. All right. So very briefly, there are two methodologies. One is called ELISA. E L I S A. It's an acronym. Uh, we use that as a screening. Uh, those tests can be conducted in about six hours. So that is the equipment that we've purchased. So we'll be able to do the screening ahead of time. There is the L C M S M S. Again, it's another acronym uh, test. That is the one that we rely on. That test takes about 24 hours to produce. Uh, and that uh, uh, those facilities are out of state, and those are the uh, that's the one that we will continue to ship our samples so that we can get the results. And that's about a two-day turnaround on those, right? So it's the overnight uh, UPS or FedEx to get it there, about 24 hours to produce the test, and then they and then they uh, email us the information as soon as they have. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. May I, may I ask Steve McCord's question? One more question. All right. Go ahead. Choose. Steve, given your professional background, how has this affected restaurants, and what does it mean for people in the restaurant business to deal with this? Well, you know, it's uh, interesting, and I've been in and out of several restaurants just to see. Some some folks are got the, the advisory posted, and as people come in, they're saying we're using tap water, so if this is an issue before they're seated, you know, they can make their decision to stay or leave at that point. Um, there's other folks that are, you know, not using any, anything but bottled water or water from a, a, a clean source in all their preparation. So it, 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 it varies from total caution to listen to the advisory, giving people information they need, and then they continue their operation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.